Chapter 1, The Icky Six. I'm so sorry to wake you, but it's urgent. Liara, what's going on? We have a code black. <laughs> Lieutenant Mack, this is Officer Jack. Do you copy? Over. Officer Jack, this is Lieutenant Mack. I got your back. Ready for attack? Over. Dr. Seuss. It ain't a crime, Mr. Grimes, officer. Any sign of the suspect? No sightings here. Who was that? Hold that thought. We have eyes on the suspect. Suspect is heading eastbound. You got her? I'm on it. Lieutenant Kate, like, 15 different tries to catch me on her first drill. It wasn't 15. Technically, it was 14.5, if you count for the margin of error and the fact that the timer was incorrectly calibrated. Maybe someone besides Sam can play the spark next time. I can do it. No. 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 You melted the giant snowman in City Square last time. To be fair, I thought it was the abdominal snowman. Abominal snowman? Little heroes, this is Officer Sam. Absolutely, we'll be right over. Who was it? Secretary Liara from City Hall. The mayor wants to see us. <gasps> Do you think he picked one of us to be the little hero of the month? I hear there's a pizza party. I don't think there's gonna be a pizza party, Mac. short notice. Of course, it's our job. Oh, please, have a seat. I'll let the mayor know you're here. Candy? No, 
thinks candy makes me spaz out. Oh, what? No, Leona! What? Mayor Mister, the little heroes are here to see you. Oh, oh dear. Can you please tell them that I definitely haven't been crying all morning and that I just have really, really bad allergies and everything's fine? Uh, well, you're on speakerphone, so I think you just told them yourself. How good it is to see you again. It's good to see you too, Mayor Mister. Oh, and I see we have a new face. Who might you be, my boy? This is uh, Officer Jack, the new recruit to the Little Heroes team. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mayor Mister. Oh, please call me Mister Mayor. <laughs> it's a joke because how my name is. Well, <clears throat> anyways, uh, please have a seat. Is everything okay, Mayor Mister? Secretary Liara said there's been some kind of emergency. Well, I suppose I should cut just straight to the chase then. There seems to have been a code black. Code black? Jailbreak. Did the stealer swipe the guard's keys and break out again? I'm afraid it's much worse than that. Six of our most dangerous fugitives were broken out of prison last night by an unknown suspect. Allow me to introduce you to the Icky Six. Tantrum, Lofa, Besla, Rankarat, Worrywart, and Pompey. Yikes. It's important to understand that these are no ordinary criminals. They don't simply set fires or steal things. They're much sneakier than that. What's their MO? Modus operandi. Great question, Officer Sam. These criminals, monsters really, convince other people to do their crimes for them. Can you give an example? Certainly. Let's start with Tantrum. Tantrum, as his name suggests, has a bit of a temper. He once convinced a disgruntled bag boy to smash all of the eggs in a grocery store. Next, we have Lofa, a criminal who makes sloths look like hard workers. He's been known to lure his victims into week-long video game marathons. First thing, they're fighting zombies. Next thing, they become zombies themselves. Then we have Bezla. To say he's greedy would be putting it lightly. He once convinced one of Santa's elves to steal 500 teddy bears from the toy factory. Why would anyone need that many teddy bears? Mm, why indeed. Then there's Worrywart. He once was caught pretending to be the boogeyman, but don't worry, he'll be more afraid of you than you are of him. Next is Rinkarat, bitter as a rotten grapefruit, this one. She could convince the sun to be jealous of the moon. Actually, come to think of it, she did that. Then there's Pompey, or Princess Pompey, as she likes to be called. Thinks she's all that in a bag of crisps. She loves to convince people that they're better than everyone else. Who's the one in the middle? The mastermind behind all of this. The one who broke them out of jail. Their leader. You see, if you capture all of the Icky Six, but you don't capture their leader, they'll just keep escaping. So we have to catch all six monsters who apparently have some sort of mind control powers and find and defeat their evil leader? In a nutshell, yes. Easy peasy, we catch criminals like they're Pokemon. But they're not Pokemon, Sam. They're real criminals. I've never caught a criminal before. I can't even catch you when you're pretending to be a criminal. Come on, Jack. Don't be so hard on yourself. Mm. Lieutenant Mac is right, Officer Jack. You're still learning, and what better way to learn than through experience? And it's not like you'll be doing this alone. We're all in this together. We got your back, Jack. Well then, let's go nix the icky six. Chapter 2, Wilfer. Oh. 
Holy ravioli, I am one sleepy chef. Time to get home and catch some ziti's. Mamma mia. I'm gonna sleep like a little lamb after making that vegetable soup all day. Time to dream of sugar plums and souffles and... <laughs> what? I just... I just went to... Fettuccine Alfredo, do I have to go to work today? Yeah. <laughs> um, who are you? Name's Loafer. Friends call me... Loaf. How'd you get inside my house? Chill, fam. You're letting off Mondo stress vibes. Mamma mia. I need to start getting better sleep. Why don't you start now, muchacho? Just stay home. Take some naps. Watch some flicks. You feel me, man? But my vegetable soup, it's at the restaurant cooking. I, I need to go check on it. I mean, the, the celery, the, the beef steak, it will burn. Come on, dude. Don't cook the vegetable. Be the vegetable. Be the vegetable? Be the vegetable. Hmm. I guess I could use a day off. That's the spirit, brother. Flaming hot. several articles online about the Icky Six. Twelve and a half to be exact. One of them was just a Fuzzbeed quiz called, Which Icky Six Monster Are You? Oh, I think I took that quiz yesterday. I think I was the green one. It says here that the last time the Icky Six were loose, they almost destroyed a whole city in Ohio. Buttercup, just south of Toledo. What happened? The mayor of Buttercup said it was like they put an evil spell on the whole town. It was in chaos. Fires burning, crime soaring, people fighting, even the police and firefighters. Yikes, how are they stopped? Buttercup Sheriff Rosie Doe managed to break from the spell and catch all six villains in some big trap. Wow, that's crazy. How did she break free from the spell? The article doesn't specify. My concern is how the Icky Six keep breaking out of jail. Great question. If I ever wanted to break out of jail, but I'd never be in jail, I'd probably just karate chop off the locks like, hi -ya! You all right there, Mac? <laughs> One second. Little Heroes, this is Lieutenant Kate. Roger that, we're on it. That was Mayor Mister. There's a kitchen fire at his brother's restaurant downtown. Chef Mister's restaurant? That's the one, let's roll out. Oh, he makes the best pizza. Can we get some? Wait, I mean like after the fire. Chef Mister, his soup is done. Where is Chef Mister? All right, chefs, it's almost time for round one. But first, your secret ingredient. Oh. That dude kind of looks like the mayor. Round one is uh, a ding 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 ding. Uh oh, ding 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 ding. I don't really see it. It's unlocked. Chef? Oh, hey, little dudes. Want some flaming hots? No, thanks. We've had enough flaming hots for one day. 
Huh? Do you have any clue what's going on? Your restaurant was on fire this morning. Fire? Broccolini, fettuccine, my vegetable soup. Why didn't you come into your restaurant today? Uh... You're tired. I, uh, I, I was tired. So you left the crock pot boiling all day? Chef, you know better than that. It's not my fault. Uh, he told me to be a vegetable. Your couch? Uh, no, that guy. He, it, was his, it was his idea for me to skip work. Uh, yeah. Uh, Kate, can I talk to you for a second? Okay, I honestly think Chef is out of his mind. No, I just don't think that's it. It just smells like the work of the Icky Six to me. I don't smell anything. Mamma mia. Spaghetti. -o. Chef, did you leave your crock pot on at your restaurant? Yes, but... Uh, Were you supposed to be at your restaurant this morning? I, I, I suppose, but... Uh, and but, you decided um, to stay home anyway. Tell your dog eat your homework or something. What? That's the laziest excuse I've... Fatty Spaghetti. It's all my fault. I'm sorry, little heroes. I... If I would have went to work this morning like I was supposed to, this, this fire never would have happened. I take full responsibility. Loafer! Oh, hey dudes. Want some flaming Hots? This is super not chill, you guys. Thank you, little heroes, for saving my restaurant. And saving me from Loafer. And saving me from myself. To thank you, I would like to serve you one of my finest dishes. Duck confit? Braised pork shoulder? Homemade a cheese pizza! Chapter 3, Tantrum. Hot chocolate, the perfect winter treat. Complimentary marshmallows. So morning. It'll pick up after lunch. Chocolate, the perfect winter treat. Complimentary marshmallows. No thanks, I already got some. Oh, um, okay, uh, stay, um, stay warm. cup of you taking this stand down immediately. Oh, I'm so sorry. We only have hot cocoa at the moment. If you have a complaint, please fill out one of the comment cards. Listen, I've been selling hot chocolate on this block for the past two winters. You can't just come and start selling the same stuff right down the road. Same stuff? <laughs> What I'm selling is hot cocoa, an artisanal winter beverage. What you're selling is hot chocolate for kids on the Polar Express. And with marshmallows, which we all know is the mayonnaise of drink topping. Take it down. Make me. <laughs> Have a blessed Monday. Hey! Hey, wait! Not 
supposed to talk to strangers. I just want a cup of chocolate. Oh. Went to the other guy down the street and he was just like. <coughs> I know. He stole my idea. But there's nothing I can do about it. No! He stole your idea and your customers. You need to make him pay. Wait, but he didn't buy anything from me, so. No, you need to make him pay. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, so I get them in chokeholds and read the Michaela rights? No, 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 Miranda. Miranda and no toko. Right, right, sorry. What if they're bigger than me? I mean, mentally or physically? <sighs> Let's take a snack break. We've been at this for five hours. Good call, Sam. All this police training makes me hungry. And kind of sweaty. Speaking of sweat, I heard there's a new hot cocoa stand off Elm Street. Speaking of sweat? Well, cause hot cocoa, hot things make you sweaty. Look, it made sense in my head. You wanna drive the police cruiser this time? Absolutely. Sorry, sweaty palms. All right, sorry folks, gotta fill her up. Red and Top Coco, thank you for your patience. It's go time. You have your window. I don't think I should be doing this. He deserves it. Besides, just think of all the business he stole. And no one's too good for the Polar Express. <laughs> Ah! Yeah, you do it! Yeah, come on! Goodbye, chocolate chips and bits! Spill it all over the ground! All the way over into Indiana! That's where it belongs! <laughs> okay, come on, yeah! You, you got this! Just keep your foot on the pedal! Okay, yes! You, you can do this! Okay, keep going! Keep, keep going! You got this! Okay, 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 okay! What was that? Relax, it's just a call on the dispatch radio. You wanna answer it? I guess. Okay, remember what we practiced. This is Little Heroes, may I take your order? Little Heroes, it's Brandon, the Brandon's Hot Cocoa Stand. Oh hey Brandon, we're actually on our way to your cocoa stand. Yeah, well you might wanna hurry. It's an emergency. What happened? you guys are looking for. I know who it was. How can you be so sure? I have the evidence right here. Now, you go and have a hot chocolate of a day. Thank you. You're welcome. Excuse me, ma'am, are you Jesse? That's me. Now, would you guys like some hot chocolate? I can throw in some extra marshmallows. No, thank you. Um, can you confirm your whereabouts at... <laughs> Oops, sorry. I think I grabbed the wrong notepad. Where were you at noon today? I've been here all day. Liar! You trashed my stand. I know it was you. Yeah, right? He can't prove it. He can't prove it. Now, move along so I can serve my incredibly long line of loyal customers. Jack, the evidence, please. Right. Oops. She sabotaged you. The only thing now is revenge. Well, we had proof, and you're the only one who could have done it. It was not. Was. Two. 
ma'am, may I see your license and registration? <coughs> Jack, no, we talked about this. He never listens to you. You spent all this time teaching him how to be a cop, and he still doesn't know anything. It's like you're not listening to anything I've been teaching you. You're gonna let her treat you like that? She's not the boss of you. Well, technically she is my superior and... Wait, who are you? Wait a second, you're one of the Icky Six. You're a tantrum. I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> Buddy, but this is my partner seat. <laughs> this isn't fair! What are you doing? Get back here and I'll come in right now. I'm always the victim. Well then, I think some apologies need to be made. Jesse, you want to start? Yes. Brandon, I'm really sorry. I thought you were stealing all my customers on purpose and it made me mad. But ruining your hot cocoa stand was not a good way for me to handle my anger. I forgive you, Jesse, and I'm sorry I said your hot chocolate wasn't classy. Truth is, I'm a softie for marshmallows. Marshmallows are disgusting! And Jack, I'm sorry I get frustrated with you sometimes. I know you're doing your best, and I'll try to be more patient. It's okay, Sam, and I'm sorry for melting your bike seat in the microwave. You're all lame! I'm always angry and look how well I'm doing! We should probably take him in before he breaks the cruiser. Okay, thank you, little heroes. Sorry you didn't get your hot cocoa. Wait, I have an idea. Can you guys be here later this afternoon? Sure! today, Officer Jack. Not so bad yourself, Captain. Sorry, sweaty palms. <laughs> Chapter four, rank a rat. One more, one more. <laughs> Yes, I win. I told you I could do more. Shh, guys, Yara's calling. Oh, please, you did one push-up. Good afternoon, little heroes. That is technically more than zero. Guys. Sorry, Liara, go ahead. Thank you. First and foremost, I'd like to congratulate each of you for catching two of the six of the Icky Six in just a week. Thanks to you guys, Loafer and Tantrum are back in Gerald where they belong. Now, I know there's no I in team, but there is an I in Little Hero of the Month. That's right, the mayor has selected a Little Hero of the Month and requests your presence as soon as possible at City Hall. All right, all right, we're on our way. Wonderful, see you all in a bit. All right, you heard the lady. Let's go get to the City Hall before I forget my acceptance speech. Acceptance speech? Uh, yeah, just in case, you gotta be prepared. Who do you think it is? I don't know. It could be anyone. Back! Oh, coming! Welcome, Rescue Squad. Unfortunately, Mayor Mister is currently attending a mayoral retreat and will not be able to present this award in person, but he sends his warmest regards. He asks that I present this award in his place and read the following letter. January's Little Hero of the Month was chosen on behalf of their courage, bravery, and grit. This little hero showed these strengths in the past week by saving my brother, Chef Mister, from the evil snares of the Icky Six villain, Loafer. Didn't you help catch Loafer? 
Yeah. This yes. little hero is not just a hero, but an exemplary firefighter. I know. Pretty cool. January's little hero of the month is none other than Lieutenant Kate. Oh, thank you so much. This is a great honor. I'd like to get thank all of you for helping Lieutenant me. Lieutenant Matt. I think you misheard. The little hero of the month is Kate. Me? Way to go, Kate! What should we do to celebrate? On behalf of the mayor and the city of Littleville, we will be throwing a pizza party this Friday at 3 here at City Hall. You better start sending out your invitations. Pizza! 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 Are you alright, Mac? You seem upset. I'm fine. Someone gets balloons. Jack, um, you get balloons. I'll get the candy. Yep. Mac, please be happy. Kate, um, um, you also need to fix the table box. And um, Sam, don't forget the balloons, please. Sam, you wanna drive, Mac? No thanks. I think I'm going to walk home. Okay then. It should have been me. She doesn't even like pizza that much. Everybody gets to have more fun than us. It stinks. No, I think that's just you. But it's fine. <coughs> I'm used to it. You should do your own party. You know, that would really show them. What kind of party? A pity party this Friday at 3. But that's... The perfect time to feel sorry for ourselves. <laughs> Mail. You've been cordially invited to a pizza party in honor of Lieutenant Kate, Little Hero of the Month. RSVP with your favorite topping. Ooh, I'm putting pineapple. <laughs> you and your weird fruit pizza. You are semi cordially invited to a pity party in honor of. Wait, a pity party? Is it a pizza pity party? Wait a second, this is from Mac. He's planning his own party at the exact same time as Kate's. <gasps> this smells like oregano. <laughs> got your invites. You know Kate's party is on Friday, at the same time. You were there when Liara told us. Well now, why would I purposely plan the party at the same time to make my friends have to choose between me and the girl who doesn't deserve to be a little hero of the month? You're trying to ruin her party, I know it. If you were mad, why didn't you just say so? I'm not mad. We're sad, it's a pity party. Hey Mac, there's no space on your invitation for pizza topping suggestions. Can I just- Not now, Jack. Fine, don't come to my party. I guess I'm not worth celebrating. <coughs> I got pizza! Hey Sam, could you help me out with these? Help is on the way. Hey, have you talked to Mac today? Nope. Is he still hosting that pity party? I don't know, just don't mention it to Kate. I don't want her feelings to get hurt. Don't mention what's me. Uh, that I accidentally took a bite out of your pizza slice. Sorry. It's okay, I'll just get another slice. What's going 
come on. Come on, let's just go inside. Really, Mac? You can't be happy for Kate for like one hour? Well, no one is ever happy for me. Well, now nobody's happy, period. Uh, that's the point. Kate, wait up. I'm so sorry, I don't know what's gone into Mac. Yeah, Mac is being totally whack. It's okay guys, I'm just more surprised than anything. This just doesn't seem like something Mac would do. <gasps> because he didn't. Who do we know that likes to make people hurt their friends? The, the Icky Six! six. Uh, hold on a minute, I don't think this is something that the Icky Six would do. I mean, they're criminals. Having some lame party isn't a crime? No, we've seen the trickery before. I'm sure about this one. Mac, I know you're upset, but can you just please talk to us about it? I should have been Little Hero of the Month. I helped save Mary Master's brother too. Mac, I know you're bummed you didn't get the award, but we all deserve a time to shine every now and then. Kate, what are you doing? Here, I want you to have this. I don't want your feelings to be hurt anymore. What are you waiting for? You got what you wanted, take it! No, Kate, you should have this medal. You earned it. I should be proud of you. I am proud of you, Kate. You! Me? Did you hear about the new game Night Court? Oh my gosh, it's so much fun! Hey Mac, you got any leftover food from your pity party? I have a TV dinner for one. That is truly pitiful. Chapter 5, Bezler. This morning, but I'll let you try one if that hot cocoa is for me. It's got your name on it. <laughs> okay, but first, try one and be honest. This is so. Um, is it all good or is your mouth full or are you just speechless? Sorry, I'll stop talking. Awesome. Nay! What? I would tell it year round if they weren't so hard to make. Did you know that unicorn teas are only in season through mid spring and sometimes June? Anyway, gotta take these to City Hall before they get cold. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Brandon. Can you please watch my counter while I go run these errands? Anyway, I really have to go like right now. Bye! Looks like she forgot something. I better go take these out there before she leaves. Whoa, hold on a second. These unicorn donuts are as rare as the mythical unicorn themselves. And yet, here they are, practically begging you to eat them. But I didn't pay for them. They aren't mine. And I already had one, so I'm good. Are you, Brandon? So you're telling me if you found a treasure chest full of golden doubloons, you would take one coin and say, I'm good. Well, no, but... Because listen, buddy, this is your treasure chest. It's now or never. These puppies aren't going to be around forever. And you heard the lady, they're limited edition. Donut. 
The donuts are good. Who's up for seconds? Okay, go! Six miles per hour. What? That can't be right. I swear I ran 10 miles per hour yesterday. Let me see. My turn. On your mark, get set, go. Holy smokes, 80 miles per hour? Are you an actual cheetah? I'm fast, but I'm not that fast. Someone's in a hurry. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, little heroes. I was supposed to deliver my unicorn donuts to City Hall for Mayor's Bowling Brunch at 9 a.m., but I forgot them at my shop. So that's why I need to get there right away. Okay, slow down. Man, you talk almost as fast as you drive. Is there a speed limit for speaking? No, but there is one for driving, and you were going about, mm, 40 over it? Mm. Jack, can you hand me my ticket book, please? Do you not have your own doodle pad? Well, since all my speeding tickets have turned into comic strips, I'm going to let you off with a warning. Oh, thank you so much, little heroes. It means so much to me this morning. I promise I'll be more you to careful next time. Oh, silly me. Sorry about that. See you later. Lower, please. We've got to go get some of those unicorn donuts. They're life changing. Hang on, Picasso. We're going to stop by City Hall to get a new ticket book. Oh, right. Man, these donuts are rich. The richer the better, amigo. Mom, I've had enough for one day. Enough? There's no such thing. It's never enough. You need more. But Harry's here. What am I going to do about the donuts? Finish them. Leave no traces. Are you eating the cardboard? Leave no traces. Here's your new ticket book. Is there anything else I can get for you, little heroes? Coffee? Candy? That's okay. We're just about to stop by Red Harriet's to see if she had any extra unicorn donuts. What a coincidence. I was just waiting on a box of unicorn donuts myself. I ordered them for Mayor Mister's bowling team brunch this morning, but they never arrived. Speaking of Red Harriet, little heroes, this is... Slow down, Red. What happened? What's wrong? Sounds like someone ate the unicorn donuts. Hmm, I wonder who could have done that. What do you mean? I'm just saying, if anyone loves sugar and unicorns, it's Red Harriet. You think she ate all the donuts? Just a theory. But I'm pretty sure he had a calcium. Okay, deficiency. Red, I got it. Did you see anyone in the store? I thought I saw one through the window, but they left, so I don't know. What did he look like? Well, I mean, they were colorful and they have round circles in the middle. Sorry, the person you saw, not the donuts. Oh. Kind of looked like Brandon, but he left. Brandon of Brandon saw Coco Stand? That's the one. <laughs> Red, be honest with us. Did you eat those donuts? Of course not. I took 48 hours to make those. Look, we understand if you did. I mean, they're pretty amazing donuts. Listen, I didn't eat them. I don't know who did, but it wasn't me. I can explain. Brandon, how could you? How could I? How could you make such delicious donuts and expect me only to eat one? 
I'm sorry, Red. I feel sick about it. Literally. I guess I just got greedy. Bezler! Oh! <laughs> hey, officers! <laughs> How did these get here? I'm so excited to finally try them. Here you go. Thanks for making these for us. You're welcome. It only took half as long since Brandon helped me. You know, I may have added a special ingredient of my own. Hot cocoa? Yeah, hot cocoa. <laughs> Chapter six, Pompey. Red, please. Okay, let's fire it up. Fire it up, all right. Well, can't have a fire engine that starts fires. That's just impractical. I guess it's time for a new fire engine. Did someone say new fire engine? Mayor Mister! Is that for us? Indeed it is, little heroes. You've caught two-thirds of the Icky Six, and that is something worth celebrating. So let's celebrate. Come on. Come, come. I know you're itching to see it. Whoa. Look at this. It's cool. Holy smokes. This is amazing. Now, it's a different kind of engine than you're used to driving, so I'll need to give you some lessons before you can use it, okay? You don't want to end up with one of these. <laughs> Trust me. Can you teach us now? I wish, darling, but uh, I really do have to get to a ribbon cutting ceremony and I still can't find my uh, big scissors, so <laughs> you'll have to excuse me. Listen, I'll teach you first thing Monday morning, but until then, leave it be. You got it, Mayor Mister. Thank you so much. Dude, Mayor Mister shreds. Man, what a beaut. We should cover it up in case it rains over the weekend. Can't we just drive it back into the garage? You heard, Mayor Mister. No driving till Monday. <laughs> Sweet ride. Thanks, we just got it. Want to take it for a spin? Mayor Mister said we can't drive it until we've had lessons. Lessons? You know how to drive. You're a little hero of the month. If anything, you should be teaching the lessons. Yeah, but I've never driven this type of engine before. You'll figure it out. Easy peasy. I mean, you're like a car genius. Who taught Mac how to change a tire? Me. Mm-hmm. And who fixed the police cruiser when it was leaking that weird green stuff? Me. Mm-hmm. All right, girl, put on that seatbelt. No, like actually put it on so we can drive. Oh, got it. Road trip! Dude, Jack, you need to come check out the new fire engine. New? I thought you were fixing the old one. Yeah, Mayor Mister got us a new one, and it's amazing. You need to come check it out. Hang on, let me finish this composite Icky Six sketch. Who's that supposed to be? Well, since we still don't know who their evil leader is, I've drawn a sketch based off of the evidence we've collected. This one is basically all of the faces of the Ickies combined. That is nightmare fuel. Okay, let's go check out the new fire engine. Oh yeah, it's right outside the warehouse. Oh my gosh, you are gonna freak out when you see it. It is you, Monk. Where is it? Out of gas? Impossible. We just filled up. Here, let me try. <coughs> That's 
not good. <coughs> Great observation, Sherlock. Something's wrong with the engine, but I've never seen one like this before. We should call for help. What? Um, no, we are not calling for help. What? Why? Rule number one and two be the best. Never admit you're wrong and never ask for help. It's probably just overheated. Here. Poppy, no! You've reached Lieutenant Kate. I'm unavailable right now, so please leave a message. Kate's still not answering. That's it, we need to call Mayor Mister. Wait, I think she's calling. Kate, we've been trying to call you for... Wait, what? Get off the phone! You're a firefighter, you can handle this yourself! Are you kidding me? This skirt costs more than that whole fire truck! What happened? That's none of its business! We had it under control! Get off the phone! No! I was just trying it out. Mayor Mister told us not to drive until he gave us lessons. Is he seriously trying to blame this on you? He's just still jealous. He didn't get picked for Little Hero of the Month. It wasn't my fault the engine come busted. Which wouldn't have happened if you'd listened to Mayor Mister in the first place. I'm sorry. I thought I knew what I was doing, but I didn't. Thanks for still having my back. It's okay, Kate. We're just glad you're okay. Oh, please. Is that Pompey? Of course it is. I look amazing all day, and now is when anyone can even see me. Excellent, Lieutenant Kate. You're a natural. Thanks for still giving me lessons, Mayor Mister. Oh, of course. I just want you little heroes to be safe. I'm very thankful you're all right. I'm glad the fire engine is okay, too. Indeed. <laughs> Although, is there a reason it smells like strawberry milkshake? Chapter 7, Worry Work. Jack to this patch. We got a 1080 headed toward Jolly Street. The Steeler's on the run. I repeat, the Steeler is on the run. <laughs> this patch, can you repeat? I repeat, Earth to Jack. Do you copy? Over. Copy, I'm here. Finally, I was about to call the police. Sorry, I must have slept through my alarm. Well, rise and shine, Sleeping Beauty. We got a house call at 7502 Vicious Circle. What's the issue? A little girl named Ruby Roo says she heard a noise coming from her closet. Wants us to come check it out. Think you can be here in five minutes? You got it, on my way. <laughs> Careful next time. What if you crashed? I'm not going to crash. Are you I... sure about that? I don't think you have the best track record. <laughs> Driving is too dangerous. Think of all the things that could go wrong. I guess I could just take my bike. Are you crazy? That's just as dangerous. You'll fall off and break your arm. Then how else am I supposed to go meet up with Sam? He was right there! He 
The Rabbit Monster. Okay, Ruby, let's start from the beginning. When did you first hear the noise? Well, it was late last night. Technically, this morning, I guess. I woke up to a loud thump coming from my closet. I was like, well, I'm already up, so I might as well go check it out. So I started walking towards my closet, and that's when it happened. You saw the monster? No. I stepped on a Lego. All seven years of my life flashed before my eyes. I've heard tales of stepping on Legos, but the reality of it was more than I could bear. If I hadn't been wearing slippers, I might have not been here to tell you this story. Okay, Ruby. Let's get back to the monster thing. Right, sorry. So anyways, I walked up to my closet, and when I opened the door, I saw him. The rabid monster! What did he look like? He was maybe like two to six feet tall, 80 to 200 pounds, between the lengths of 50 and 40, between the ages of eight and 40, and curly brown hair. Actually, it was straight, I think. You know what? My partner usually does the sketches. Let me go see where he is. Earth to Jack, where are you? Good grief, what happened to you? Did you run here? I just figured I could. My steps. Do you have any water? I'm sure there's some inside. I found some. So, what's the status on Ruby? Uh, right, she thinks she saw a rabid monster in her closet. Rabid monster? Yeah, like a monster with rabies, I guess. I think I'm gonna pass it. It's silly, I know. But I told you you'd do a composite sketch just to be thorough. She's waiting inside for us. You can't go in there! It's too dangerous! What if the monster gave you rabies? You coming? Yeah. We'll go check it out. Come on, Jack. Jack, come on. Don't do it. Don't do it. I think I'll stay down here and get a sketch of the monster with Ruby. Jack, we both know there's no such thing as monsters. Now I really need you to come with me so we can both show Ruby that there's nothing to be afraid of. It's a trap! It's a trap! But what if there really is a monster with rabies? He's joking. I'm gonna go check right now. So can you tell me what the monster looked like? Well, he was about 40 to 10 feet tall. 60 to 300 pounds. Either 12 or 50 years old. Can you tell me what he was wearing? I think he was wearing a yellow shirt. This is too scary. Make her stop. Oh, and big front teeth. What if he eats you? We gotta get out of here, man. And words all over his face. Probably from the ra rabies. And big rabbit ears. Rabbit ears? Yeah, like bunny rabbit. Wait a minute. You! I don't see anything. It's that guy who's been scaring me all day. Scaring you? Jack, why didn't you say something? I thought if I told you, you'd think I wasn't brave enough for the job. I keep having this really bad fear I'm gonna crash the cruiser. The more I worry about it, the more I start to worry about everything else. Jack, having fears doesn't keep you from being brave. Everyone has fears. It's what you do with those fears that makes you brave. 
Just saying your fear takes courage, and you just did that. You too, Ruby. It was brave of you to call us when you got scared. I guess so. I just wish I wasn't such a worrywart sometimes. That's it! That's his name! Worrywart! Chapter 8, The Grand Finale. Okay. Uh, time to go over your morning checklist. Ah, yes. Sorry, sir. It's okay. Are, are you all right? It's got to screw loose, that's all. Screw loose indeed. Found it. Oh, I'm okay. <clears throat> Okay, then, should we go over your morning checklist now? Uh, yeah, yes, yes, indeed. Do carry on, Miara. Okay, then. Number one, water the official Littleville City plant. Check. Number two, do your morning break dance. Number three, change the prison lock so that the icky sticks don't break out again. Oh. Good googly googly. What have I done? Now, Mayor, there's no need to panic. What will the people of Littleville think when they see that I've let the icky six go on my watch, which is broken and is still being repaired, by the way? Oh, it's a little monk fruit. The press is gonna have a field day. I need you to calm down. I am calm. Look, all we have to do is keep this a secret, and it'll be like this never happened. You're saying we should lie and pretend the jailbreak never happened? What jailbreak? I think your worry went impression needs some work, Sam. My rank ride is better. How come you get to drive the police cruiser and I don't? Speaking of the icky six, we have a meeting with Mayor Mister at 10. Way ahead of you, broski. Walk into City Hall as we speak. We should call Kate and Matt just to make sure that they're on their way too. They're on their way, all right. Silverhawk to Bald Eagle. Do you copy? Over. Am I Bald Eagle or are you? Wait, am I going bald? You're Bald Eagle. It's just a code name. Do you remember what to do when the heroes come in? Yes, vaguely. Uh, is it hot in here? Could, could we turn the heat down? It's June. The heat is off. What? What's that? Are those sirens? They're coming to arrest me! Just stay calm and do what I say. <laughs> Aren't firefighters allowed to break the speed limit when they're on the way to a fire? Were you on the way to a fire? No. Come on, goobers. We're gonna be late to our meeting. Little heroes, what a pleasure it is to see you. Hi, Liara. Is Mayor Mr. ready for our meeting? Of course. Why wouldn't he be? He's definitely ready. <laughs> this way. Hey, Mayor Mr. What's shaking? Shaking? <laughs> Who's shaking? That's what nervous people do. I don't have anything to be nervous about. I'm fine. I'm totally fine. Everything's fine, Mom. Calm down and focus. <clears throat> yes, um, just having a laugh. <laughs> uh, what can I do for you, rescue squad? Well, we were wondering if we could use the interview room to interview the Icky Six before the trials start next month. Ah. Tell them the Icky Six is 
Critics are sick. Uh, yes, I'm, unfortunately they're feeling a bit under the weather. You see, they've developed some kind of flu, a bird flu, so they're more, should be called the icky sick. Well, that's not a problem since the interview room separates us from them through a glass window. So. Oh, that's right. The interview room is infested with raccoons. The interview room actually is infested with raccoons. I love raccoons. They're like little trash bandits. The raccoons have rabies. Uh, they're rabbit raccoons. Perfect. I love rabbits even more. <laughs> is everything OK, Mayor Mister? Don't you crack, oh, Mayor I Mister. I, I love what I say. Sorry to interrupt. The mayor has to um, take a call. It's very important right now. So you all better get going, OK? OK? Mm -hmm. Let's go. All righty. Bye-bye. I'm not the only one who thought that was weird, right? That was weird, all right. What are they trying to hide from us? There's something wrong with the Iggy Six, and it sure ain't bird flu. <laughs> if we can distract Liara for a minute, I can hack onto her computer and check the jail security cameras. How do we distract her? I think I know a way. Now, I know sometimes you're in a hurry, but what if there is an actual fire? Then people would walk around my car. Ah, uh, see, now that's not how a fire zone works. Mac, why don't you explain how it works? Yeah, let's have a history lesson. Try Passport. Wait a minute. Try Secret Life. So in 1922, the New York Fire Department had lots of fires around their fire department. I simply cannot keep this lie anymore. People were parking their cars. Liara, they're coming for me! And like the people were really mad, and so the fires could never stop. Jack, Kate, Liara's coming in. Hurry, Kate! Found it! What do I do? Mayor, miss her, just please tell us what's going on. You can't just come in here and try to take over the mayor's office like that. What? That's enough, Liara. I cannot keep living this lie. The Icky Six have broken out. You! You've been the leader of the Icky Six all along! <laughs> it's a shame you didn't catch on sooner. Or rather, didn't catch me sooner. Now my ickies are as free as birds. Free to torment. Louisville to the whole town is ours. You'll never get away with this. <laughs> oh, yeah? Watch me. Please forgive me, heroes. All of this could have been avoided if I had just told the truth. It's not all your fault, Mayor. None of us suspected Liara of being the leader of the Icky Six. But yes, we forgive you, and we're all going to work together to make this right. That's right. We caught the Ickies before, we can catch them again. All right, Rescue Squad, let's go nix the Icky Six. For good. Yes, wonderful, yes. First, would you help me finish my morning checklist? Quick 
to subscribe or watch more videos.